Welcome back to the Southampton International Boat Show 2021. Now today, the boat we are looking at is the Moody 41 Deck Saloon. Now, for those of you who don't know, Moody, classic British yacht designer, have a huge pedigree, but they were kind of taken over by uh, Hans and that whole group many years ago. And they now build these kind of pretty interesting deck saloons. Now, I've always been interested in these. I think it could be the best of both worlds, but let's kind of take a look and see if it actually ticks all the boxes that they kind of claim to tick. So enjoy this one, let's go inside. Let's start with the cockpit of the Moody 41 Deck Saloon. This is a twin helmed boat, so you have helm stations on both port and starboard, and controls, plotters, and navigation equipment on both. The lines are captive and the cockpit is deep. There is also full communication between the upper saloon and the cockpit with these large opening doors and windows. Reminds you of a sea wind in some ways. This cockpit, as with all the Moody's in this range, have a retractable hard top, which allows you to get the sun should you want it or shade if you require it. A pretty useful feature. With this deep and wide cockpit, you also benefit from a really lovely outdoor area to relax in for the off watch or when you're at anchor. And the cockpit is bisected by this teak cockpit table with raising gatefolds and also a grab rail, which on Ruby Rose we found something to be very, very useful in a seaway. Now, something that you are going to hear time and time again through this review is the amount of storage space on this boat. It is phenomenal. So good storage space. We have good communication with the upper saloon and we have good helm position. All in all, this is a really competent craft. The owner of this particular boat has gone for twin plotters with the beautiful digital throttlers. One thing to note, solid guardrails all around the boat. This boat does make you feel safe. There are deep and wide side decks. There is low maintenance flexi teak here, just swinging past the emergency tiller access there and moving around to the bathing platform and the helm seats. Everything feels, I think the best word for it is chunky. Now, one thing that's not going to be optional on a boat with this amount of freeboard is a good, powerful bow thruster, and that is on the port side here. But we touched briefly on the storage. Look at the depth of this locker. There is storage on both port and starboard here. And aside from the storage on the port and starboard sides, there is also a dinghy garage in the transom. Add to that a bathing platform, a fold down steps for swimming, and you really are not going to be short of any place to store either your life raft, your dinghy, or any accessories, toys you are going to want for your life on board. One thing to note is how deep and secure these side decks feel. With the high freeboard of the coach roof and those solid guard rails, this reminds me very much of the Nordhavens. And now let us talk some statistics on the Moody 41 Deck Saloon. We are looking at an LOA of 12.5 meters, that's 41 foot. Waterline length, 11.4 meters, which is 37 foot. You've got 14 foot of beam here and the displacement 26,000 pounds. Now the draft we are looking at seven and a half foot, that's 2.25 meters, that's pretty deep. There is a shallow draft option of six foot one, but even six foot one is not that shallow. So if you are going to go into shallow waterways or shallow areas and anchorages, you may struggle with this. And finally, as we arrive at the bow of the boat, you can see this huge locker lid, which will double obviously as a bench when underway. It is aft of the anchor windlass capstan, but opening this up, you can see the size and the space that you get for stowage here. So there's a stainless steel ladder that goes down. It's about six foot deep, but this will give you so much space for stowing your sails, your lines, your fenders, and anything else you may need underway. A huge, huge amount of storage space here and something that we rarely see in a boat of this size. The foredeck of the Moody 41 benefits from flush mounted hatches, which as you know, I love. There is also the track for the self tacking jib here. So again, everything neat and out of the way. One thing that I would note is that with the self tacking jib, a boat of this size and the height of the coach roof, you are gonna have a sail area, which does not give you scintillating performance. But I don't think you ever thought this was going to be a performance cruiser. 
moving aft again, you can see those captive lines, a good set of clutches, everything running aft, and you've got that primary winch there for easy access from the helm. Now, as we do with all these boat reviews, let's have a quick chat about the mast height. We are talking about 65 foot above the waterline, so it's not unfortunately ICW friendly. That's 19.92 meters. That's going to give you a 480 foot square foot main and a 409 square foot jib. If you have the optional Jenica, that will increase your total sail size to about 893 square foot. Now let's take a look at the interior of this Moody 41 and see what the deck saloon actually gets you. A raised saloon gives you full visibility while at anchor and also while at sea. You have a forward facing nav station, which as you know from all our catamaran reviews is something that I really applaud. It also gives you the ability to navigate and steer, albeit without a wheel, from an inside position. The starboard side of the boat gives you access to the sofa and dining table. It's comforting to see a good fiddle table with stainless steel grab rails and that large U-shaped settee will give you really good visibility while you're dining or while you're at anchor. One thing that I would note, and this is a personal point of my own, is that because we've seen so many catamarans, this saloon, because of the very nature of the fact that we're in a monohull, seems small compared to any other catamaran that we've seen. But what you do benefit from is absolutely fantastic views. And honestly, sat at anchor or at sea with a view like this, if you are going to be sailing to colder climates, this view is absolutely fantastic and really cannot be beaten if you're in a monohull. However, with this view, there is always a payoff and the payoff is the amount of freeboard, the height above the waterline that you are going to have. That means she's going to be more difficult to handle in cross currents and cross winds in marinas. And also the pendulum effect from being that high, much higher above the waterline could be a problem. But if that doesn't concern you, then you are a really great platform for living. As we swing round now onto port and look aft of that nav station, you have this compact but functional galley. The galley comes with the standard cooker. The Corian work surfaces cover that so you end up with greater amounts of work surface. You also have the freezer as well as a fridge. So again, uh, stowage and cold storage on board is not going to be a problem. And as we take the slow pan around the galley, let's talk about the price. The price of the Moody 41, you are looking between 480 and 560,000 US dollars. Now you get a lot of boat for that money, but at this price point, you are not gonna get the quality fittings that you are gonna find in something that is two to three times the price. However, what some of you may know and some of you may not know is that we used to own a Hans, and that is uh, Hans are owned by the same group that own Moody, and the quality of their fit outs is above average. So while you are not obviously gonna get the bespoke nature of the oysters and the Halberg Rassies, what you do get is a solidly well-built boat, something that we would happily sail and happily even consider living on. And one thing that is so important when you are a liverboard is the amount of storage space. Again, another, not, this isn't even a locker, this is a separate room under the saloon. The storage here is phenomenal. I hazard to say that even Teresa could not fill up this boat. Moving forward, we head down a second set of stairs into the area which is reserved for the berths. The bow of the boat contains a large and airy master suite. Now, one thing I want you to note on this boat, if you compare it to say the Arcona that we looked at last time, is the width of the bed here. This is not a performance cruiser, and this means that you get a queen size bed, and it is possible for you to both sleep with your head at the bow of the boat. Overall, I found this to be a very inviting space. There is a lot of natural light. Those port lights in the hull let a crazy amount of light in. There is a lot of practical stowage, both in shelving and in cupboards. And those large flush mounted hatches above give a real sense of light and space in this cabin. It's actually of the budget cruisers. I think this is one of the nicest cabins that I have seen. 
moving aft and to starboard of the master cabin, you have the heads. Now this is divided into a wet and dry area and the whole head is really, really large. There is a full height standing shower cubicle with a closing door. However, I would have wanted to see the toilet in the dry area rather than the wet area on the boat. Now, before we leave the accommodation, let us take a look at the guest accommodation. Something to note in the Moody 41, it is only a two cabin boat. So if you have a large family, this may not be for you. Also, the guest cabin is partially under the sole of the saloon floor. So there is restricted head height in part. However, it is still a light and airy cabin. The berth is huge. And again, you will not struggle for accommodation or sleeping room here. And finally, before we leave the saloon, I just want to talk about the forward facing nav station. It has its own independent throttle control and you can steer from the chart plotter. This to us, if we were in colder climates, would be absolutely invaluable. An internal helm is an absolute boon. And finally, let us talk about the engine, which is a sail drive and held under the cockpit sole. This is a 57 horsepower Yanmar. You have a fairly heavy boat here, so you're going to need a fairly sizable engine. And one final thing to note, access is easy and there is a lot of space for your maintenance around the engine. So impellers, fuel checks, oil checks are not going to be a problem. Overall, very, very accessible. So what did you think? Did you like this? Let us know down below if you know what your thoughts are about this deck saloon. Do I like it? Yes, I do. I think it serves a specific niche. She is very, very plumb at the bows and she's very plumb at the stern. This boat is clearly looking to internal volume and space. And what you get is a huge, huge amount of space. Lockers that you could actually, that are actually bigger than my first boat. This is, I think, probably on the whole scale of like, which has the largest amount of internal volume for a 41 foot boat. This is incredible. But what's the playoff? The playoff is that you have a crazy, crazy amount of freeboard. So maneuvering in close quarters in high winds is gonna be slightly difficult. The other thing is that she's up pretty high. So like you're gonna get like a, the, the pendulum effect in a seaway is gonna be slightly higher. But the playoff to that is that you get these huge panoramic views. You have a deck saloon, which you can, the, the forward facing nav station, like literally we're talking about being able to sit there. It's a proper pilot house, albeit it doesn't have a wheel but you do, you can completely steer and navigate from the inside. The other thing that I really like about it is these really deep side decks. It smacks to me of the Nordhavens. It's really trawler-esque in the way that it's kind of got like probably, you know, six to 12 inches of like, of like just tow rail that you can kind of walk down. And that makes me feel secure. Plus, of course, we're looking at complete stainless steel grab rails. It's a solid, solid looking boat and she sails really well. Now, would I buy this boat to circumnavigate? Probably not, but if I wanted to kind of go around, you know, higher latitudes, go like Brittany, the Northern European coast, this boat, actually, it takes just about every box. Teresa and I always think, okay, well, how much, how much space do we want to sacrifice for liverboard? So yes, I do really like this boat. I think it is a slightly niche market, but I do wish them all the best with the future and how this, you know, the sales of this boat and the development of this boat kind of like uh, go with time. So absolutely love the boat, probably not for us, but I can see exactly what they're trying to do and it does work. So look, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked what we've done, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment and tell us what you do think about the Moody 41 Deck Saloon. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe because we have lots of other videos coming out trying to kind of explain what we think and how we think about um, you know, our thoughts on monohull designs and what is appropriate for the passage or the kind of journey that you want to do. So enjoy that and we'll be back really soon. So enjoy that and uh, we'll see you again. Goodbye.